Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that wasn't born in Texas, but got here as soon as it could. Ladies and gentlemen, I really have to apologize to you. I just do not have the time to do my top 100 games of all time this year. That takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time. And I'm, as you know, I'm in my PhD program. I just don't have the time to do that right now, so I'm not going to. What I did decide to do, however, is I noticed that there were a lot of changes to my uh, top 10 list, and there were a lot of games that probably would have made my top 100 list. So I just wanted to take a minute. I'm, uh, I'm going to do my uh, top 10 games of all time, and I just want to talk to you briefly, though, about some of the games that didn't make my top 10, but pro undoubtedly would have been on my top 100 um, this year had I I'd done my top 100. Um, for starters, you would have seen Star Trek Ascendancy. Probably would have been, my guess, somewhere in the teens. I didn't figure it out, but teens or 20s there. Um, and 1960, uh, Making of a President, again, probably in the teens there. I may have lumped it in with a Twilight Struggle, uh, uh, 1989 kind of thing that I usually have those tied. But, but 1960, great game, would have been on there. Uh, Conan, the uh, dungeon crawl with a very innovative kind of overlord system there. Absolutely fantastic. That would have been on the list. Uh, Blood Rage is not a game, of course, it's not new, but it was new to me. I just played it last year for the first time. Fantastic game. It would have made it my top 100. Uh, Batman Gotham City Strategy Game it was actually one I really enjoyed. That would be on the list as well. Um, Whitehall Mystery, which I just played here a few weeks ago, that would have been on the list. Uh, very fun hidden hidden uh, movement game uh, based on Letters from Whitechapel that I really like quite a bit. Would it have replaced Letters from Whitechapel on the list? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, Trains, another game that's been around for a while that I hadn't played. Trains would definitely be in my top 100. I really enjoy Trains quite a bit. Just played that again first time a few weeks ago. That was a game I bought like two years ago and just finally got around to playing and I absolutely loved it. Time of Crisis, another game I did. I played just, you know, not too long ago. Uh, good Roman Empire kind of war deck builder strategy game from GMT Games. Very fun, very innovative. Really like Time of Crisis. Um, Fields of Despair, uh, another GMT game, a World War I game uh, that was a block war game. It was very unlike a lot of block war games I've ever played. It kind of got into other aspects of the war, but of course you're primarily looking at the Western Front. Very, very fun war game there. Uh, Champions of Midgard, Champions of Midgard is a game, a uh, worker placement game I'd never played before until uh, last year, early last year, or this year, early this year. And <clears throat> really enjoyed it. Champions of Midgard is a fantastic game. And New Angeles. New Angeles, of course, was a game I played late last year for the first time, and it was a, um, a kind of a hidden trader negotiation game, and I love negotiation and board games. And um, so that's another one that definitely would have made my list for top 100 games. But now let's go ahead and take a look at my top 10 games of all time. So going ahead and starting with number 10. Uh, this was number 10 last year, surprise. This is Napoleon, um, the Waterloo Campaign 4th Edition. It's from Columbia Games. This is a great game that has a, um, again, you're not fighting on a, a game board or a hex board or a region board. You're fighting on a map. This is a paper map. I recently played the Pub Battles, and I got that really super nice map. This is just a paper map, but I really like that system of actually kind of moving blocks along kind of roads and it actually looking like a map. But what's cool here is... Once you get into battle, you actually then have a tactical battle board, and you kind of play the tactical battle out. It reminds me of a game I played years ago called um, American Civil War. I've still got it. It's a fun game, but where you've got the big strategic board and then the tactical game board. Really like Napoleon 4th uh, Edition. Fantastic game from Columbia Games. That is my number 10. My number 9 is um, a game that, again, I played for the first time just a few months ago, and every time I played it, Everybody's smiling. Everybody's laughing. It's kind of a kind of a party game. I, I don't know that I'd really call it a party game, but I, I don't know what else you'd call it. But it's something that just makes me laugh and have so much fun every time I play it. And this is Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler is just an absolutely fantastic game. Um, really a lot of fun. And one of the things I really like about Secret Hitler is that it is... Um, uh, you know, kind of a, it's the only way I know to introduce parliamentary European politics to we befuddled Americans. Most people I know don't get the concepts of a differentiation between head of state and head of government, and this game teaches that in weird comedy form. It's, it, it's, it's, a very, um, it's a very delicate subject, and it's a game, of course, that obviously people are going to be very put off by the theme, but I think, too, at the same time, people 
kind of understand where the game's coming from, uh, they will appreciate it. And you do have fun, you do laugh uh, quite a bit about it, but it is a very serious subject. Um, I'm actually, in one of my classes, we're uh, uh, discussing the uh, instability of the Weimar government. And, you know, as they're talking about the various policies being enacted and what have you, I'm just there going, who's Secret Hitler? No one else appreciates it. But anyway, a uh, very fun game. Secret Hitler is fantastic. Again, this is a game I brought to, 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 to groups that, you know, they're not gamers, don't have a lot of experience, and they ate it up. And then, of course, hardcore gamers uh, and friends that I played it with also love, love, love this game. I gave Zach, my buddy Zach, a gift card for his birthday here not too long ago. This is what he bought with it. So, fantastic game, Secret Hitler. That is my number nine. My number eight is a game that I played earlier this year. This is a game that um, just absolutely blew me away. It's one of a series I played the uh, uh, the first game in the series before it, loved it, and then I've played subsequent games in the series since, which I've loved as well, but this one is far and away the best one. This is uh, Rebellion, 1775 Rebellion from uh, Academy Games. 1775 Rebellion is an absolute fantastic light, light, light war game. In fact, I think it's Joel Eddy called this the ticket to ride of war games. I think that is a very apt description. This is a fantastic game where you've got different factions who are rolling uh, dice as they're attacking, but you've got to play movement cards and event cards. It's, it's done with cubes, but it's area control. You're trying to control the colonies, the states, and it is just so much fun. Uh, if you haven't played this one, uh, do it. If you're not a war gamer, that's okay. It doesn't play like a war game. kind of does, but not, not really. Um, just buy this game. You will freaking love this game. Whether you're a war gamer or not a war gamer, it's just amazing. This is 1775 Rebellion from Academy Games. Check it out. My number seven is a game that has been on the list for years. I recently played this again um, a few months ago, just before I, I left Utah. I played it with some of my friends up there, and I forgot how much I absolutely love this game. This is uh, Friedrich from Rio Grande Games. Friedrich is a game about uh, Frederick the Great during the Seven Years' War in Europe. It's a game where you are moving your armies um, around the board. You've got to make sure you're in supply. Uh, you got these little discs that are kind of wooden discs that are kind of your armies, and you can kind of secretly write down how many units of strength you have in each of those discs. But you got your supply block. You got to make sure is you know within kind of range of it. And then what happens is if somebody attacks you. Um, they've got playing cards. You reveal how much strength you've got there and then you use these playing cards, but you can only use the playing cards that are in the geographic area where you're at. It's, it's kind of a funky, abstracted version of terrain, but you play these like, you know, hearts, clubs, diamonds, whatever, but you can only play it where they are, but then you add the number of the card to the number of your strength. You add it up. It's brilliant game, brilliant fun, and of course, everybody on the board is fighting Frederick, so it's not, but, but they're not working together. They're competing against each other. So it's brilliant. Frederick, at the beginning of the game, he's got these massive armies, massive resources, and as the game wears on, it gets less and less and less. And Fantastic game. This is Friedrich from Rio Grande Games, and that is my number seven. That did move up. I think, I want to say it was number, it was like number nine last year, and now it's number seven. I played it again, loved it. My number six this year was my number six last year, and that is, of course, one of my favorite IP games, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is absolutely fantastic. Um, I love Game of Thrones, the board game. Uh, it's kind of rooted it based on diplomacy, the diplomacy mechanic of, you know, we negotiate, but then we go ahead and um, actually simultaneously reveal our orders, and you can screw people over. And it's a game where no one faction is powerful enough to win alone, so you have to make alliances, but as soon as somebody starts with those alliances to look too powerful, people turn on them. And so you've got to you've kind of strive to be in second place for as long as you can. Be powerful enough to take care of yourself, but not too powerful that people are going to come after you, and then just at the right time, unleash hell, and and, and get in a position to win the game. It's fantastic. I love Game of Thrones, the board game. It is phenomenal. Uh, I hardly, I highly recommend a Game of Thrones board game, second edition. That's from Fantasy Flight Games, and that, again, is my number six. My number five is a game that did, it did fall a couple of spaces. This is a game that for, I think the last couple of years has been my number three, um, and it didn't fall because I love it. It's just kind of some of these other games kind of creeped up uh, above it. This is Fury of Dracula. Fury of Dracula, of course, from Fantasy Flight Games. This edition, third edition from Fantasy Flight Games, uh, is absolutely fantastic. Hidden hidden movement game. Everybody's searching for Dracula, but it's not just you find Dracula and the game's over. Then you got to fight him and you got to beat him. I actually played this a lot last year. I played several games of this last year. Uh, or, pardon me, this year. <laughs> I played several games this year. I introduced, uh, I was working at a car dealership. I, I introduced my manager to it. He loved it. We played 
two or three games at his house. I played some other games with other friends this year. I probably played this game about six times this year. And I love, love, love Fury of Dracula. This is a game I get giddy with. It tells great stories. Um, you can get stuck on the opposite side of the board at times. There is that, uh, that that can happen. But it is just a fantastic game. I love it, love it, love it so much. Now, um, Games Workshop did kind of divorce Fantasy Flight games in a brutal, brutal custody battle. Got uh, got custody of Fury of Dracula, um, which was actually was a was a Games Workshop game from the beginning. Um, and now Wiz Kids recently got the. Um, Games Workshop uh, license, so uh, there's kind of speculation. I think they even mentioned on, on their announcement, Fury of Dracula will be coming back into print, and it'll be interesting to see. Will it be a whole new edition? Will it be revert back to the earlier editions? Does Fantasy Flight own some of the mechanics? How does that work? So we'll be seeing hopefully a new edition because this, you know, Fantasy, uh, Fury of Dracula came out around October of fifteen. And by 16, they'd announced the split. So Fury of Dracula, it's, it's hard to find now. The third edition was hard to find. Second edition was hard to find forever. Third edition was hard to find. Now we'll see what happens with uh, this new edition from Games Workshop. And hopefully that gets out sooner rather than later, and we'll see what they do with it. Uh, so once again, that is my number five. What was my number three? Fury of Dracula from Fantasy Flight Games. Number four is a game that was number four last year. It kind of held its spot even as Fury of Dracula went over it because I just felt this game... Is that good? And I kind of do, I think, after playing it more, especially after a recent expansion, like it maybe a little a hair better than Fury of Dracula. This is Star Wars Rebellion, uh, the second Rebellion on this list. Star Wars Rebellion is phenomenal. It is one of those great IP games that really captures the flavor and the feel of the IP. You feel like you're in the Star Wars movies uh, when you play this game. And the game, the base game itself is phenomenal. But the recent expansion that was added, uh, you know, got some great new characters, great missions, great units and vehicles, and all that stuff's good. But what really elevated this game with the expansion is the, the, the combat system. Combat system in the original was, was clunky, was wonky. To be honest, it's still a little clunky and wonky, but it's a lot better with the expansion. Uh, they really, they, they made the, 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 the choices a little tougher. And it just, it just works so much better combat system with the expansion. I love Star Wars Rebellion. This is, I think, just a fantastic game. Uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful IP game. And frankly, to me, the definitive Star Wars game. I will tell you right now, Star Wars Armada, which has been on my top ten list for, I think, the last two years, it's no longer on my top ten list. Uh, I still love it. I actually played that a lot this year as well. I still love it very much. But less so now. I, I find I'm less interested in it. I, I haven't picked up the most recent wave. I don't think I'm going to. Um, maybe eventually, but not, not anytime soon. I'm just, I kind of have reached the saturation point with Star Wars Armada. So uh, that is, but Star Wars Rebellion, absolutely fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. That is uh, my number four from Fantasy Flight Games. What's for last year? Star Wars Rebellion. So my number three is a game that I played late last year, about a year ago, um, for the first time. And to be honest, right after I played it, I thought it could very well be my number one game of all time. And for a long time this year, I've been wrestling with that. Is this my favorite game of all time? And I was really going back and forth on it, and some, some reasons to be disclosed later. I, I will tell you ultimately why it's not. But I will tell you that I, I absolutely love this game. It was a game that, from the very first playthrough, I could tell this was something special. Um, I played it several times, and what's great about this game is that it's only about 30 minutes, and you can play, you know, so, you know, in two or three hours you get several games in, you get five or six games in, so it's very, very, very good uh, in, in that sense, you can get a lot of games in. But I've played several sessions of this, I've played maybe five or six sessions, and each of those sessions, like I say, four or five, six games each time. Love, love, love this game so much, and again, it's a game that everybody... Uh, that has played it, has loved it. Uh, been a little scared, a little, a little frustrated by it, but absolutely loved it. Uh, I am, of course, talking about uh, uh, Asmodee's uh, Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar is fantastic. It is fantastic. It is so much fun. Again, first time my friends and I played this, um, after we played four or five games, we walked out of there and we were just grinning. We could not wipe the grins off our face. We had so much fun. This was just, like I say, something special. Uh, it's a game, it's a team game, you need eight players, that's the only downside, you really need eight players, but you got four players on each side, two teams, four players each, 
and your submarine crews, and you've got a captain who's got his job, the engineer's got his job, first officer got his job, and then and the radio operator's got their job. And you're trying, it's like a game of battleship, you're trying to, 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 to maneuver and find where the enemy ship is and blow it up. And it's so much fun. I did a, I kind of recorded our first playthrough, so we got a playthrough video, there's a few of the rules we got a little wonky on there. But you can see our, our playthrough of it from last year, it was just phenomenal. Um, everybody loves this game. Everybody, because it is so much fun. I love Captain Sonar deeply. I really want to try to get a game together down here in Texas sometime because I think um, I think uh, some of my friends, new friends down here, will really get a kick out of it too. So this is Captain Sonar from Asmo Day, and that is my number three. My number two game this year was my number two game last year, and pretty much since the list started. Um, this is a game that again. Um, when I first got it, uh, it was a gift from a friend. I was like, yeah, I wasn't interested. But at the time, I was only really playing, you know, war games, Axis and Allies and so forth. And the idea of playing kind of a more abstract game, well, it's not abstract. It's very highly thematic. It's maybe the most thematic game ever. But, I mean, the, a game that wasn't a war game, kind of, it just, it didn't sit well with me. I didn't like the idea. But I'm like, all right, we'll play it. And it blew me away and blew my friends away. And this, of course, is Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica, the board game, is, like I say, quite possibly the most thematic game ever. I have never, ever played a game that so well recreates the theme of its source material. I mean, Game of Thrones board game does a great job uh, of that. Star Wars Rebellion does an amazing job. Star Wars Rebellion, I, I may say, is number two when it comes to that. But Battlestar Galactica just recreates the, 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 the TV show Battlestar Galactica so well. In fact, I started playing this game again earlier in the year. I went back, I watched the entire uh, series again. I just finished it a few nights ago. Um, and it does. I, I mean, it was funny because I'm watching the show. When I'm playing the game, I'm thinking, oh, it's just like the show. I was watching the show and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, it's just like in the game. It's just like in the game. And it's so good. I mean, the, the series was so good. And then the the the... the the board game itself is just so amazing and rich. And I've played this game with people who haven't seen the um, the show. One person I know didn't care for the game. Hadn't seen the show, didn't care for the game. But I played it, I, I just played a game of this yesterday here in Texas. Taught some new friends how to play it. And one of the people that was playing with us, uh, she had never seen the show before. And she loved the game, it, even despite the fact she was in the brig virtually the whole game. She couldn't get out of the brig. She couldn't do anything. She still loved the game. She still saw what an amazing game this was, and it is. This is just an amazing game. And again, just this game yesterday, I, I'm convinced. Um, that, you know, one of the guys he was a silent. I was just convinced he was, and it turns out he wasn't, and it blew my mind. Um, I played a game in March with with Holly. It was Holly and George's first game and Kevin's first game, and. I was convinced Holly, there, there was some, we did some skill check and one of us screwed up or did something wrong. And so we were both convinced that each other was a silent and she was getting really mad. Like, like not in game mad, like really mad because I was accusing her of being a silent and neither one of us were silent. And it was so much fun. And I love this game because it's on the mechanical level. The mechanics of this game are so brilliant, so balanced, so nuanced. They're fantastic. And then on this other level of kind of the accusatory hidden traitor, you get that same thing you kind of get with, with, with Secret Hitler, you know. Uh, you get that aspect on top of it, which is just kind of the, the dessert, the cherry on top. Uh, this game is phenomenal. If you have not played Battlestar Galactica, the board game, even if you haven't seen the show, you need to play it. Now, here's the thing. I think it's out of print now. Very hard to get. Um, but if you can get it, you need to get it. You need to play this game. Please, I'm begging you, play Battlestar Galactica at least once. If you're at a convention... Get, get a hold of it. Play it. You need to play this game. It is that good. Battlestar Galactica from Fantasy Flight Games. My second favorite game of all time, consistently for the last few years. And uh, that's my number two. Now, my number one game of all time for the last several years has been Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. I'm going to tell you right now, Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition is not my number one game of all time. Um surprised me. Like I say, I thought Captain Sonar may be number one, but of course I've been playing on the Battlestar Galactica and remember how much I loved that. Um, and as it turns out, there is a game that has usurped Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition's place on my list. And so now, drum roll please, my number one game of all time as of 2017 is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. <laughs> 
That's right, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Uh, this is um, a fantastic new edition of this game. Um, Twilight Imperium 3rd uh, Edition, of course, had so much that I love that is recaptured, recreated, and streamlined, improved upon in Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Um, why do I love uh, this game? The epic stories it tells. Um, you've got this grand space opera adventure. I love that so much. I love the, the, the negotiation. There's so much negotiation in this game, and as I say, negotiation is my favorite, favorite, favorite mechanic of all. I love negotiation in games. It's, it's phenomenal. It's fantastic. And I love it, love it, love it so much. Um, so... I, it's got that, but it's also got kind of an Axis and Allies feel where you, we, I mean, the combat's straight out of Axis and Allies, um, but you're building up ships and you got a plan to do this. I mean, this, this game of TI4 I played the other day, um, I uh, had you know, a couple of war sons. I'd taken Mechatol Rex, I was primed in positions. Uh, then one guy attacks me from one side, I got to send a war son in to take him out. And then as I'm doing that, another guy has like a special movement thing where he's able to move his war son right into my home systems and take one of my worlds. It's it's just phenomenal. It, there's so much going on. This uh, the political agenda phase is cool. They they made some great changes. Like I said, the political agenda phase. You're doing two agendas. They only trigger after Mechatol Rex falls, which is awesome. Um, it's not tied to a strategy card like it was before. Uh, you got tech is really highly improved. Tech, you're you're going ahead. You're 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 instead of the big long tech tree you had in TI3 here you just look at tech and say okay I need this many of this color in order to get this it's very easy to figure out and to, and to work with really enjoyed that you got trade is much better here more open you can only trade with people next to you and you get uh, as a, as a, as a you know, strategy card you get these commodities that you can then turn it into trade it's, it's just phenomenal um, this is this game has everything for me it's a long game 4 to 8 hour game and that's fine with me. I I would I love playing big long game. I'm a guy that was my bread and butter since high school for years was Axis and Allies. These these long long you know hours and hours long games is Axis and Allies. So I love those systems and I love those ideas and um, I, I love long epic games that draw you in that have got kind of a, 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 a hint of role playing to them where you can really sink your teeth into it. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I love TI4. Now, TI4, I don't think it's going to be available for a couple of months yet. I'm recording this in the end of October. I think it's mid-December is when it's going to come out. As soon as it comes out, do yourself a favor and pick it up. I know some people from Gen Con got a copy. Do yourself a favor. Pick this game up. You will absolutely love it. Uh, only caveat, it doesn't have the Distant Suns optional rule in it. I'm hoping with expansions we will get the Distant Suns optional rule because that, to me, was a very fun um, at part of TI3, and I hope to see it again in TI4 very, very quickly. So, friends, uh, my number one game of all time, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition from Fantasy Flight Games, number one. Well, thank you so much for joining us for my top ten games of all time. Again, I wish I could have brought my top 100, but I just didn't have the time to figure it out, much less film it and edit it. So, um, but, I, but, I, but I really appreciate this. Hopefully you found something on here that was informative or entertaining. No? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, uh, we ask you to please leave us a comment on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and did you ever see Jericho? The TV show Jericho was awesome. They just do a board game of that, but, but it was cool because you kind of had the western United States break off. Uh, from the eastern United States of the Mississippi with its capital in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and kind of the definitive, the definitive kind of factor is which way is Texas going to go? I'm in Texas now. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band That girl said I love to fight But I don't ever know when It's a fine line To get me shot But God let me in The swine